This is part 52 of AngularCRAD tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss how to read query string parameters in Angular. This is continuation to part 51, so please watch part 51 before proceeding. In Angular, there are three types of parameters. We've got required, optional and query parameters. Now, if we take a look at the project that we've been working with so far in this video series, when we search for a specific employee, and when we click on that respective employee panel, we are redirected to view that employee details. And in the URL, we have our search term query parameter. Now, when we go back to the list, we still retain that search term query parameter. We discussed how to do all these in our previous video. At the moment, we are not reading this query parameter value. We are also not populating the search by name text box. And we are also not filtering this employee list. In this video, we'll discuss how to do all these. To read query parameters, we use Angular's activated route service. We use this same service to read required and optional route parameters. We discussed how to read required and optional route parameters in our previous videos in this series. Now we need to read the query string parameter from employee list component because we are on the list route. So within our list employees component class, let's inject the activated route service. So within the class constructor, Let's inject activated route service along with employee service and the Angular's router service. I'm going to name the private field underscore route. And this is of type activated route. Now, depending on how the query string parameters change during the lifetime of this component, there are two approaches to read query string parameter values, snapshot approach and observable approach. We discuss the difference between these two approaches and when to use one or the other in part 42 of this video series. Now, when you're working with any of these parameter types in Angular and irrespective of whether you're using the snapshot approach or the observable approach, there are three methods and a property that are extremely useful. They are has, get, get all and keys. The first method has returns true if the parameter is found in the parameter map, else it returns false. This method is extremely handy to check for the existence of optional route and query parameters. The second method get returns one of these three things. If the specified parameter is found in the parameter map, it returns the parameter value. If the parameter is not found, it returns null. If the parameter value is an array, then it returns the first element. The third method get all is extremely useful when you know the parameter value is an array of values. So this method is going to return an array of values if the specified parameter is found in the parameter map. If the parameter is not found, then it's going to return an empty array. Finally, keys. This is a property and it returns a string array of all the parameters. Let's look at these in action now. So in this ng on init lifecycle hook, let's use this private field underscore route. For now, let's use the snapshot approach. We can use the same API even with the observable approach. We'll discuss the observable approach in just a bit. And we are working with query string parameters. So we use the query param map property. And notice when I press dot on this, we see all those three methods and the keys property. So first, let's use this has method to check for the existence of this search term query parameter. So let's specify the name of the query parameter as a string. And we want to log this to the console. Let's do the same thing with the get method. So instead of has, we use get. And let's do the same thing with get all. And finally, keys property. Now let's launch browser developer tools. Notice on the console tab, first we see true because this has method has written true because in the URL we have the search term query parameter. And the get method has returned the value of the search term parameter, which in our case is John. And get all this method returns an array. And at the moment for the search term, there's only one value. So the array contains only one element. And if we expand that, that element has a value of John. And then the keys property 
Finally, this returns an array of all the parameters. So if you look at the array, we have three query parameters in that array. Search term, test param, and new param. So we have the search term right here, next test param, and finally new param. Now if you're wondering what happened to this optional route parameter, well at the moment if we look at the code, we are working with query param map property. So this API which consists of these three methods and the keys property will only return us the query string parameters. Now if you want the optional and required route parameters, then instead of using query param map property, we use param map property. So let's use param map and see what we get. Let's make a copy of this and then instead of query param map, let's use param map and notice here when I press dot, I see the same API. Let's just use the keys property. Notice that last line returned our optional route parameter ID. So in the URL, we have this ID optional route parameter. And what we are getting here is an array and that array contains one element which is the ID optional route parameter. Now let's include another optional route parameter here and see what happens. So in addition to ID, let's say we want to include another optional route parameter name and let's set its value to Prajim. Let's hit enter. Notice now we get an array with two elements, both of our optional route parameters, ID and name. So the important point to keep in mind is to work with any of these three parameter types, we use this same API. To work with query parameters, we use the query param map property and to work with required or optional route parameters, we use the param map property. Now, instead of simply logging the parameter values to the console, let's do some useful work. First, let's check for the existence of our search term query parameter. So instead of console.log, let's use if. So if this has method returns true, then we want to initialize the search term property that we have within this component class. Notice we have the search term property right here. So we want to initialize that property with the query parameter value. So this dot search term equals, we can copy the same line right here. And then instead of using has method, we use the get method to get the query parameter value. If the search term is not found, it comes to the else block. And in that case, we want to set the filtered list to the full list of employees. So let's move this line to the else block. So if the search term is not found, then we display the full list of employees to the end user. If the search term query parameter is found, then we read that query parameter value and we are setting that value as the value for search term property. And if you look at the setter, of the search term property, we are not only setting its value, we are also filtering the list that we display to the end user. Let's save our changes and give a quick test. Now let's search for an employee. Click to view employee details. At this point, when we click this button to go back to the list, notice we retain our search and the list is also filtered as expected. At the moment, we are using the snapshot approach to read the query parameter values. But keep in mind, we can use this same API even when we use the observable approach. On the next slide, we have the code required for the observable approach. Notice in this example right here, we are subscribing to the query param map observable and then we are using the same API. First, we are using the has method to check for the existence of the search term query parameter. And then we are using the get method to get its value. That's it in this video. Thank you for watching and have a great day.